Now, I can't promise that you're gonna hold every chip like that, but what I can promise is by the end of this video, your chipping is gonna be on another level. So before we get into these chipping mistakes, the first thing that I wanna say is that you must not be scared of making contact with the ground. Every great chip shot that has ever been hit, contact with the ground had to have been made. So the first thing that you must understand is that you must not be afraid of making contact with the ground. So such a simple little thing to help you with that. Every single practice stroke you do, make contact with the ground. Such a simple little key detail, but arguably could be the most important part of this video. So the first mistake that I see so many amateurs fall into when it comes to chipping is they get the center of mass of the club, or we can use the club head as our guide, behind the hands in the backswing. Now, when this happens, essentially from here, we are sort of on a one-way street to shove the hands forwards, drive the hands forwards, and get into a situation. The more we drive the hands, the more we're gonna expose the leading edge and promote sort of a diggy shot, because what also is happening is as we drive the hands forwards, the club head's coming off the ground, so we're gonna have to use some sort of knee dip or something to get down to the ball. As you can tell, a lot's going on from just a very simple backswing mistake. So the key thing, if we bring in the downline view, is that we do not wanna see that club head get too far behind the hands. A really nice little demonstration I like to do with my clients is if I just take the club back into this position, I grip it by the button of the grip and I just let it drop. You see how it sort of drops to the inside right here? Versus if I take the club out in front of me and I keep that club head I keep the center of mass in front of me. I grip it by the button to the grip and I just let it drop. You see how it sort of drops back onto the ball? So which one is more desirable? Well, it's the second one because if we get to this position here, we can just let that club fall as we then turn through the shot. So the key thing that we have to understand is as we make these little takeaways is we wanna keep that club head sort of in line to slightly outside of the shot. Why? Because then the gravity of the club is gonna to wanna to fall onto the back of the ball versus if we get it in this direction, we are gonna to have to drive the handle from there we can see a whole load of issues chunking thinning um, even shanking your chip shots it's a horrible horrible situation to be in now what's a really simple draw that's going to help you well grab an alignment stick seriously these things only cost about 10 pounds but they are absolute lifesavers now if i set up to this chip shot right here i'm just going to hit a little standard chip if i place this alignment stick about two foot outside of me and in line with my toes if i just shove that in the ground right there now if i do an inside takeaway you can see how I have hit that alignment stick and I have got direct feedback right there. So if I just make a little backswing and I keep that club outside my hands, you can see just for a little chip shot how I haven't touched that alignment stick. So from there, the club is naturally then gonna wanna work onto the back of the ball. So if we can do this drill where we can hit chip shots just subconsciously without even hitting this alignment stick, you know your backswing takeaway is in a good spot. So if I just hit a little shot here, again, I'm just gonna try and get as close as I can, miss that alignment stick right there. Let's see how well I do. You can see, didn't touch the alignment stick, chip shot's not too bad, about two foot tapping par right there. Mistake number two that I see so many amateurs fall into is they back out of their chip shot. So you'll see their head pull backwards. Now this is such a hot topic in the industry right now. Joseph Mayo has been working with Victor Hovland on pretty much this precise move of fixing that head, making sure it's working forwards. And uh, if you watched the Ryder Cup, you would have seen how awesome Victor's chipping was. This is such a simple move that we can implement into your chipping. It's just gonna make things so much easier. So what does this look like? If I try and demonstrate this, it would be a situation to where the golfer, as they come down into the downswing, their head starts to back away from the target. So if I do that right here and I back away, I managed to get away with it right there because I used the bounce of the club, but it's so hard to control a start line, low point, ground contact point, an overall angle of attack, direction, speed. It's so hard to control anything when we're doing that. So the key thing that I want you to imagine is at address, imagine I am holding an alignment stick on your trail ear. Even get your buddy to do this for you. I want you to set up at address about 60, 40. So just a little bit weight favor in there. Alignment stick on your trail ear. Now, as you make a backswing, I want you to feel like your head goes towards the target just slightly, you know, about half a head width. As you can see on the screen, I'll put up a, a video of Victor Hovland right here doing it. You can see his head in the backswing goes towards the target. Now, from there, I just want you then to feel like you can turn through. Hint, that's gonna be the third thing that we're gonna work on, so stick around for that in the video. And this is gonna get us in a position to where we're able to move our low point forwards. Now remember, low point is different to where we first made contact with the ground. I've got videos coming out on that later down the line. But what this is essentially doing is if I start here, head goes towards the target, and then I pivot through, 
I'm gonna be able to get a really nice crisp strike on every single one of my chips, and it's going to reduce the chances, especially if you're that golfer who hits it fat or drop kicks it, so you feel like you hit the ground and then it bounces up into the back of the ball. This is gonna massively help you with this. In fact, this is what I'm working on in my chipping right now. So a swing thought that I really like is setting up in just your normal sort of setup position here. And when I do this, I sort of feel like my nose is kind of on the inside part of my lead foot. And again, I'm taking you through my swing thoughts right now when I do this. Now, as I take that club back, I feel like then the nose, my nose goes over the outside part of my foot. So it goes from inside part of my left foot to outside part of my left foot, and then I just pivot through. And it's just such a simple little thought, and it's made the world a difference for me. I'm able to get some really nice crisp contacts, a good amount of spin, very consistent strike. So let me show you what that looks like right here. Let me do a little rehearsal swing, staying relatively even, 60, 40 in my feet, nose on inside part of my left foot. As I take it back, it goes towards the target, and then I turn through just like so. If I hit a little chip here, let's see how well I do. So again, 60, 40, nose on inside part of foot, head's gonna go towards the target in backswing, and then I'm just gonna turn through. And you can see as I've done that, got a little pulley on that, took a bit of a bounce left. Again, about two foot away, one, two foot away, tap in par what we wanna be seeing, but you can just hear, hopefully it came up on the mic, just how crisp that was. So mistake number three that I see so many golfers fall into is they stop turning their chest. That is one of the most common issues that I see, again, every single day on the lesson tee, they'll hit a chip short, they'll get to about here, and then their chest will stop turning and they'll just sort of fling their arms at it. Actually, that turned out to be a pretty good shot, but you can see how inconsistent it can be. If I'm throwing these angles out and trying to time everything up, it becomes very, very difficult. Although the result there wasn't too bad. Now, in terms of what we want to be seeing, what do we see with all the best chippers? They keep their chest turning. It's such a simple swing thought, but it's gonna help us if we think back to the very start of this, where I said, uh, where the club sort of glides on top of the ground, it sort of skids on top of the ground. If you stop turning your chest, you could very much just chuck it into the ground like so. So if you keep your chest turning, that club is going to be encouraged to sort of glide through, especially if you're hitting in rough or into the grain, things like that. It's going to encourage that club to keep gliding through the, uh, the grass so that you can get a really nice crisp contact. Now, there are loads of drills out there. You could do things like place a towel under your arms, but actually I want to give you a practical swing thought that's going to massively help you. Now, if I just sort of do the motion of a good chip shot right here, you can see as I finish, my chest is pointing towards the target. And that is the simplest swing thought. I think this can be a swing thought that anybody can use pretty much tomorrow if they go out and chip. You can see that if I just do a chip and I go, right, I wanna finish with my chest and my hips, my belt buckle and my chest pointing towards the target, you know that that's gonna get you in a position to where you've turned through. You can see my heel, my trail heel, is ever so slightly pivoting as I do this, and it's helping me get my weight through. So you can very much see how issue one, issue two, issue three that we've gone through today are all linking together in a good sort of solid movement. Back swing, head movement, and the final piece is pivoting through, having your chest point towards the target. Now, if I hit a chip in this situation, again, using that swing thought, so having my chest feel like it points towards the target on the way through, keeping that rotation very constant, very steady, you can see that as I do this, this should produce some really nice little strikes just like so, got a little bit too keen on that one, but it's pulled up slightly, nice, so about a foot by, pretty good chip again. If I do it one more time, keep that chest turning, let's see what happens. And you can see again, that one looks a little bit better. Close. So all of those have been very, very nice little chips. So there we have it. Those are the four key things that we are talking about today. Number one, you've got to make contact with the ground. Number two, keep that club head level to slightly outside the hands in the backswing. Number three, we want to see that head go towards the target in the backswing. And number four, keep that chest turning in the follow through. So let's see if we can put it all together, finish off with one last awesome chip and potentially even hold it. Let's take a look right here. Looks pretty good. And we've only gone and done it. So there you have it. Those are the three most common mistakes that I see, plus a little bit of a myth buster just to start that lesson off. If you need a little bit more one-to-one -one help with your game, offer online coaching on the Skillist platform. Check out the link down below. You can have a lesson with myself, no matter where you are in the world. If you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a like and subscribe, and I hope to see you back here soon.